Okay, hi there, welcome to a micro video. Uh, we spent a few minutes thinking about some of the key factors that influence the, the coefficient of price elasticity of demand. So what do we mean by price elasticity of demand? Well, it's basically the responsiveness of the quantity demanded for a good or service after a change in the product's own price. So the key question really is whether consumers are price sensitive does the quantity demanded change a lot when there's a change in the price of a product? Or do consumers pretty much continue to buy the same amount if there's a price change which makes demand price inelastic? Now, as part of your A-level, it's really important to understand some of the key factors, the key influencing factors which might make demand for a product price elastic, responsive, or price inelastic, relatively unresponsive. Here are the key factors listed, and you might want to take a screenshot uh, they are really essentially the main points. Let's quickly go through them. I think the number of close substitutes in the market is the most important factor. You know, how much real choice does a consumer have in terms of their, their purchasing? And if you have a close substitute, that's fairly easy and painless to switch between. And oftentimes demand is price sensitive. We'll think of some examples in a few minutes. The degree of necessity is also important or conversely when the good is a luxury discretionary spend so typically when a product is seen as a necessity then people become price inelastic because they're willing to pay a price for the product they need to have it they need to use it whereas a luxury you can do without it's a discretionary spend and if the price goes up then you can postpone or cancel your your purchase the proportion of your income could be a monthly or weekly budget, for example, allocated to spending on the good is often regarded as a key factor. Typically, when something is a relatively small percentage of your budget, then a price change won't fundamentally affect your ability to buy something, which makes demand inelastic. If it's a big ticket item, an expensive product, which is going to take up a hefty percentage of your budget, then you may well become more price sensitive it's going to affect your effective demand for the product. The time period allowed for consumers to respond is, uh, is an, an, a subtle but important point. Uh, typically, uh, in the immediate aftermath of a price change, it takes time for consumers to realise, to recognise, to become aware that the price has changed, so their demand may not alter much at all. In the long run, of course, if a price change is permanent or semi-permanent, then people may well change their buying behaviour uh, if they expect high or low prices to persist. Whether or not the product is subject to habitual consumption. It's linked a little bit there to the necessity point, but when we buy things out of habit, if you like, when we have a strong default behaviour, then there's some evidence that uh, we become less sensitive to the price because essentially we're buying the same thing on repeat, perhaps via a subscription model. Uh, three other factors, not always mentioned by cons uh, by uh, students. Peak and off-peak demand. At peak times, typically demand is higher and also more price inelastic. Uh, we'll think of some examples in a second. Whereas at off-peak times in certain markets, there's much greater degree of flexibility about when you can travel. For example, demand is often price sensitive, people looking for the best deal. Two other points definitely worth mentioning. The breadth of definition of a good or service. So if a good is broadly defined, broadly defined, for example, the demand for petrol or meat or milk or the demand for painkillers, let's say, demand is often quite price inelastic because you, know, you need some petrol for the car, you need to buy some painkillers for a migraine, for example. Individual brands of petrol or beef or painkillers perhaps likely to be more price elastic because there's competition within that little purchase for your money. And some economists are also thinking about the method of payment. Uh, there's some evidence, by the way, that people tend to notice price changes more when they're paying cash rather than card or direct debit. So perhaps cash purchases are um, conceivably a little bit more price elastic in terms of response. Okay, that's the first video. We've been through the key factors. In the second video, I've got some examples for you. We'll just work through whether you think demand's going to be price elastic or price inelastic. 
So have a quick flip through this video again if you need to. I've been through key factors. In the next video, we'll think about some, uh, some examples of products and we have to decide whether consumers are price responsive, in other words, price elastic, or are they, do they have a low price sensitivity? We call that inelastic demand. Okay, thank you.